Are you a local Seattle bride? Are you loving the wedding planning process? Want to come talk to us about your experience? Email us at info at fromringtoveil.com and we will set up a time to talk. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast, where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams without all the stress. Wedding ceremony, floral and decor ideas, episode number 107. So if you'd like to support us monetarily, you can check out our Patreon page at fromringtoveil.com slash give. And are you subscribed to the show? Are you on iTunes, subscription, Stitcher, Google Play? You can even subscribe to the show by going to our website and giving us your email and you will get an email every time a new episode comes out. So if you don't know how to do this, let us know. We can walk you through it, but don't miss a show. You're missing out. So today we are talking about ideas for ceremony floral. There's lots. (laughs) So many. (laughs) Uh, This could probably be a very, very long show, but (laughs) we'll try to keep it to a minimum here. All right. Let me ask you, if somebody says they want the natural look for their wedding, Mm -hmm. what do you say? When it comes to florals. When it comes to floral, they want natural, like nature inspired. Yes, nature inspired. I would use lots of branches, lots of greenery, things like that. If they're getting married outside and it's very picturesque where the ceremony is, mm-hmm. I would say take nature into account. Don't use a lot of floral. If the, you know, if the background is spectacular, you don't want to hide that. Right. Well, what about for a bouquet that they want a natural look? Well, it'd be lots of greenery again. Mm-hmm. You know, every, I mean... <sighs> It's very organic and feel to me. That's one of my words that I tell and my brides. It's organic. Mm -hmm. Like as if it grew that way. Yes. I mean, that's the way I explain them. Because when you're holding a bouquet with lots of greenery, it looks like it's growing out of your hand. Right. It's not structured like a round, tight bouquet. Mm -hmm. So. It's a more loose feeling mm -hmm. kind of, oh, I just went to the field and grabbed these. You know, gathered them up Mm -hmm. and. Like that. So that's what I would consider natural. Bring nature into it, especially if you're outside here, you know, Mm -hmm. especially like there's so many venues with great outside appeal. You wouldn't want to hide that. Right. Don't put up big screens and (laughs) hang too much from the trees or whatever. Okay. So that was just a question I was thinking about. So going your traditional classic route, I mean, a candlelit ceremony is gorgeous. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. The summers here last until 10 o'clock. So sometimes candlelit ceremonies aren't possible. Right. So you have to think of a different alternative. But you can still have that if you love, if you love candelabras, if you love, you know, things like that, you can still have them, Mm -hmm. but put flowers on the, on the candelabra instead of Mm -hmm. the candles. That's right. Pillar pieces, candelabras, urns overflowing with flowers if you're having a vintage garden fuel wedding urns are always great right because what do you do when you go into an english garden what do you think of when you think of an english garden well tons Cement, of flowers for tons one of flowers for some but then there's always urns mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. sitting around with overflowing flowers that's right so if you're going that traditional classic english garden fill urns are great they can come in all many different sizes um this the table stand of uh, plant stands or plant mm. tables just something really clean and nothing too ornate where you place your pieces on right. your, you know Have something it, which flanking be, the altar right which could be in any any way you desire it you just right. set them there and there you, you go. can either have them just sitting on the plant stand you can have them in a tall vase you can have them on pillars you mm-hmm. can have them on urns if you're doing smaller urns so i mean there's a lot of different things you can do for that classic traditional fill that's right All right, let's move on to arches and arbors, which for me is one of my favorite parts. (laughs) I love when people want them. I love how they turn out. I mean, just going from the design, usually you have a picture that they like, Mm -hmm. but going from from that to designing it and then putting it up and seeing how it really looks, that's always the fun part for me. So there's been a lot of 
different things for arches and arbors lately. Mm -hmm. The round ones. Yeah, those are really cool. Are coming into effect. So they have flowers surrounding the whole thing. It's round mm -hmm. with the pedestal on the bottom. So, I mean, it'll stand up. But the flowers are covering it. You can have curly willow covering it and then pops of color and greenery and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the traditional arches, the metal ones that you can add, you know, weave flowers into or mm -hmm. make it look like it lattice work. And, right. Oh, those are so pretty. <laughs> We also have, like, the hoopas and the square arbors where you have four posts. Mm -hmm. You can do so many things with those. Like, you can have, like I said again, curly willow coming up and flowers. You can cover the whole thing in flowers. You can have draping, which we'll talk about in a minute. Mm -hmm. I've seen ladders nowadays where they have flowers on every rung. They use mm -hmm. old rickety wooden ladders. And yeah. they have flowers on every, you know, every rung. They either have either their tall ladders with something on the top and maybe they drape something over them. So, I mean, just use your imagination. You can use almost anything as an arbor. You can even use, like we said earlier, have plant stands and have vases on them, have large amounts of curly willow in them, and have them come up and over and attach to them. the top. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a faux right. arch. So, I mean, there's tons of stuff you can do. We've even talked about doing like a big triangle um design or a hexagonal design mm -hmm. if that's if hexagonal actually, there you go <laughs> i was like is that even a word <laughs> you know something that's big and has some kind of a, a structure uh, shape to it yeah. that you can add floor, floral to or or whatever else you'd like to try to do on there um so that's another piece yeah we'll talk about ceremony. more of that in the backdrops and things like that too now moving on to the simple and and thrifty ideas. Um, you could really get very DIY with this. Of course, we don't suggest you do try to do too much, but if it's something easy that you and let's say your fiance can work on together, that would be super fun <laughs> and, and very memorable. So like I said before, outdoor weddings, use your setting, mm -hmm. use the trees in the background, use the flowers. Maybe they have gorgeous urns already flanking the ceremony site and you don't really want to take away from that. Right. Although they may not be in the color that you want. Right. That's that's where you got to be kind of like open-minded. Right. You know, just use your outdoors. If that ceremony site is not particularly fond, you know, you're not fond of it, try to find somewhere else in that venue that has a great setting. Mm -hmm. You never know. Um, indoor weddings. Use what's there. Yeah. Most indoor venues have some kind of wall that's like a feature wall mm -hmm. or like barns usually have great barn doors. Yes. You know, use that. Use brick walls. Mm -hmm. You can, I mean, something easy to do on a brick wall or even a barn door is get some clear tape, get some greenery, and tape the greenery in an arch or, you know, weave it around where it looks like it's naturally growing. Right. And you can do that. I mean, it's something simple like that. You can make it look like ivy growing, right. you know, through the grout or whatever. Um, and even sometimes they have, like, color walls. Right. And if if that's a color you can handle or you enjoy, use that. Right. So, candles. Yeah. Candles. Simple and thrifty right there. Yeah. You can You could collect candles from all of your friends if it came down to it and just had, had the whole place full of candles. Right. And I will tell you a secret. It's one of my secrets. Um, dollar Tree has dollar vases. They have dollar votive holders. They have dollar, you know, you go there, you buy dollar vases. Mm -hmm. And you fill them with candles, any size candles. It's the ambiance that, that candlelight creates that makes it that romantic right. feel. That glowy kind of warm feeling. So if you're having ceremony floral... You can also move that floral to your reception, so that's another way to cut down cost. Say you're having, you want multi-level centerpieces, mm -hmm. multi-level candle centerpieces on your tables. Well, you don't have any money left for your ceremony flowers. So those multi-level centerpieces can be used during your ceremony and can be moved right. to tables after your ceremony's done. That's right. I mean, if you have a designated person to do that, your floral designer can stay and do that if you contact her to do so. If you have a really great day of coordinator or event planner mm -hmm. that will do that for you, that's great. 
Don't but, expect them to. Make right. sure that make you sure ask. that you ask. Not on the day of yeah. either. <laughs> make sure you ask Beforehand. plenty ahead of time because mm-hmm. they'll need some kind of assistant or something to do that. But, I mean, it's great because you have the multi-level candle centerpieces. You can put those along the aisle or mm-hmm. up at the front of your ceremony site and on the altar piece. And it's like a, I love candles. Yeah. I've always said this. I love candles. I always try to tuck my brides into candles anywhere. Except, you know, summer weddings here are yeah. hard to do. Yeah. When I'm it's like, a very bright. Like, I always have to ask and say, wait a minute. What time is your ceremony? So... If it's an indoor ceremony, you can use candles almost anywhere because they can turn the lights down. Right. If it's not so well lit. And also make sure about if you can use candle candles right, or, or LEDs. LEDs. It, it, and either way, you still get the same effect. Right. Most, LEDs are great. Yeah. Most of the historic venues around won't let you use live candles. That's right. And then ribbon. Ribbon is pretty thrifty and simple and you can put it everywhere. Yeah. Anywhere and everywhere you can You can you have can an flowers. arbor put up. You can have a simple arbor put up and attach candles. I mean, candles. <laughs> attach ribbon to it. Yeah. Different colors ribbon or the ribbon that's in your ceremony or, you know, the colors of your ribbon or whatever. Right. We it, saw a great piece when we were at NBA, or I did, where they had a, a copper piped arbor. Mm-hmm. And she put ribbon from the back to the front in an angle. And oh, it came cool. down. And she had many different colors of ribbon. So, I mean, it was really cool. So You it, can get really cool with yeah. that. And make it Because, I mean, it came, you know, she started from the corners and she crossed them and then put them and they came down. And so she went that way. It was like covered like a hoopah. Uh-huh. And then it had all the ribbons. Just kind of hanging. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. And, you know, even if you did something like that and you wanted to incorporate a little bit of floral, you could. Right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I've got ideas running around here. All right. Well, backdrops. Let's talk about back, backdrops. Firstly, we were just saying ribbon. Mm-hmm. You can totally do a backdrop just of all kinds of different ribbon just hanging. Ribbon. Easy. Simple. Fabrics, which we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Let's talk about pipe and drape first. Yeah, that's probably the most difficult, don't you think? It's not difficult. It's just that you're going to have to rent it from a company. Mm-hmm. Now, some floral designers, if they're well established and they have the space to hold it, will have some pipe and drape. Some, but most of the like, most likely you're going to have to go to a like a an event company that rents linens and things like that. So right, do that. But I mean, they have all kinds of different colored pipe and drape. You can get beiges and whites and blacks, and so you can go all out, or you can just rent the pipe and find your own drape. Right, and and this is this can be like every wall in this. In the ceremony, right? right? Like, it doesn't just have to be the backdrop behind where you're standing. Right. It can be, if if you're in one of those blank ballroom spaces mm-hmm. in, a, in a hotel that are huge and cavernous, and if you want to use both of it, you know, all of that space for your ceremony and reception, you can divide it up with pipe and drape. Right. And if they have hideous wallpaper, oh, yes. <laughs> you can cover that easy with pipe and drape. Um, so the walls, walls behind you. So let's, we're saying ceremony. We're thinking ceremony. And people are looking at you. They see you and your officiant up there. But behind you, what's there? Well, you can do walls back there. Yeah, all temporary kinds walls. of walls. Right. Yeah, temporary walls. All kinds. The the ones I've seen lately, there's great chalkboard letterers out there. Yes. Great calligraphers. And they do wonders with the chalkboard paints mm-hmm. now. And they can just sit there and write it out. And I, one of my favorites is the big, huge chalkboard screens where they've written either their vows or a favorite song lyric or something of that's theirs Mm -hmm. on the backdrop. And it's really cool. Yeah. I really like those. I think those are so cool. And I hope they don't go away for a while. (laughs) And then we've talked about flower walls. Yeah. We'd love to do a flower wall. They're just really not cost effective right they aren't thrifty and simple but right. they are gorgeous <laughs> and they make a huge statement and you could move them from the ceremony to the reception or right? if you're having your ceremony and reception in a small space and you're doing a transition mm-hmm. put your sweetheart table or the head table in front of it and then you'll still have a backdrop you could also use the that as a photo booth backdrop if right. you wanted to if you were having a a fake photo booth where people could just take pictures in front of it or whatever. That would, oh, I love that. I want that. Maybe for my vow renewal. 
So doors are very popular, old tiny doors mm-hmm. that you go get at a salvage yard or something like that. Or a barn door. Really cool barn door. And you can put wreaths on them. You can put flowers on them. You can do all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Or you can just leave them plain. Exactly. If they're very decorative. Privacy screens. You can use privacy screens for your backdrop and, you know, zhuzh it up and make it look really pretty, like you were saying, Mm -hmm. with flowers or, you know, ribbon or whatever you decide that you really like. So canvas backdrops. You can get a big, huge artist canvas. Mm -hmm. Either paint it or you can just buy, like, canvas drop cloths Mm -hmm. and paint them or do anything you want to if you're having like geometric shapes or anything in your wedding you can do a geometric my my son loves to do these geometric prints when he colors and he just puts he just fills in all different shapes and sizes on a blank piece of paper and Mm -hmm. it fills it up you can do something like that in the colors of your wedding it'd be a cool backdrop it would be and you can even like have hand layering on those too right um i think it would be beautiful if you would if you would commission a friend who is an artist to do something special just for your wedding. And then you could turn that possibly into something to hang at your home. Right. Which I think they can do. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. Hanging backdrops and chandeliers. So stuff that hangs. Crystal strands were very popular about yes. five, five years ago. Everybody wanted crystal strands. You can attach flowers to the crystal strand, the crystal strands and you can surround the altar with mm-hmm. crystal strands. So, I mean, that was, that's a cool thing to do. Ribbons again. Yeah. Flower strands. You can string yeah. flowers. Kind of, I think of it like if, if you're stringing popcorn for your Christmas tree, mm-hmm. it's kind of on the same lines, only you don't put as many flowers. Well, on you there. can, you can, I mean, the flower garlands like used in an Indian wedding per mm-hmm. se, they're covered. That's true. But you can also just do, you know, random ones as well yeah instead of having it all uniform and all just like bam a whole bunch of floral you can have a couple that just have a few see you can get really really crafty with that kind of thing too so hanging terrariums geometric shapes Mm -hmm. lanterns metal or paper yeah bottles you can fill bottles with flowers put a little water in them put a sprig of flowers Mm -hmm. in them hang them i've done that too if, it just depends on your style. Exactly. And what you really, it's all your imagination can take, you know, wherever your imagination can take you. We haven't mentioned mason jars, but you could also do those. <laughs> yes, we we try not to <laughs> utter the, the mason jar word around here anymore. Terrariums are really cool. They're open, so you can put flowers inside. You can put candles inside. Succulents are really popular to put mm-hmm. inside the terrariums because they won't wilt. That's true. If you're in an outdoor ceremony and you put just a head of a flower in them, they're going to be, you know, if your ceremony's in the middle of the day, they're going to be wilted by the time yeah. it's done. You're not really going to see it that much, but... Yeah, you'll know. Yeah. It's kind of kind of sad. Mm-hmm. But you can put other things in there other than floral or plant life in there. Um, but did you say candles? Yeah, I said Okay, candles. so there's candles. But you can also do things like sand and something that goes with your theme. Like, I'm thinking if you had Legos, you could do little Lego scenes. That would be really cute. Um, So you can use your imagination on that. It doesn't have to be just a floral. Right. Uh, Oh, lights. Lights as a backdrop. I have seen some awesome (laughs) pictures of of light backdrops where they just, like, hang. Mm -hmm. And there's not really any design. It's just, like, a, a sheet of... Of lights. Yeah, like fairy lights or the ever-popular Edison bulbs now. Mm -hmm. Those are very popular where you get the big globe lights and they're just, they're that warm glow. They're not the white LED lights that are around now. Um, Twinkle lights, of course. And, of course, there's icicle lights. Yeah, I don't know. If you're having a wedding during Christmas, that might be really pretty. But... (laughs) <laughs> I don't know during the summer if you could do yeah. ice But, lights. you know, like the fairy lights and the twinkle lights, you can hide them behind drape. So mm-hmm. we don't give that gossamer effect where it's not just you see white lights on a white string of, you know, cord yes. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or you can weave them in garlands. Right. <laughs> or you can take it back to your arbor, weave them in your arbor. You can even have them hanging or just woven into the floral pieces mm-hmm. or the lattice work or whatever it is that you're 
your arbor or um, hoopa. Is that what you say? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, your arches and stuff like that. That would that would also be a beautiful look, I think. So that was mainly for the altar pieces and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to talk aisle pieces. Right. Or aisle floral. So shepherd hooks you can put up along the aisle. Every If you know what a shepherd hook is, it's basically a hook with a another small another hook. little hook that you can <laughs> hang things on. Um, you can do many things with those. If you want them down the aisle, you can either do them on every chair, which I think is too much. Well, or, depending on how many aisles well, or, well, or rows you have. Or you could do every other or you can stagger, mm-hmm. you know, one, one on your right, one on your left, you know. Mm-hmm. Two in front, two in the back. Right. Or, one, you know, two in the front, two in the middle, two in, you know, two in the back, whatever. But I, my, me personally, I don't like them on every aisle. So there's many things you can hang from those. You can do pomanders. Yes. Love pomanders. Pomanders are a ball. Pomanders are kissing balls. A lot of people call them kissing balls. They're covered in flowers. Mm-hmm. Or you can get grapevine balls and put flowers on them or, you know, different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love those. I think they're moss so pretty. Balls and- I didn't say moth balls. I said moss. <laughs> moss. You can do small vases with floral, kind of like everything that we talked about to hang on your arbors. Mm-hmm. You could hang on these hooks. Right. So small vases. Terrariums. If you're doing a very garden-inspired herbal wedding, you want to have herbs in there, you can do herb pots. Mm-hmm. That would be really cute, I think. Especially if you're doing kind of like the English garden look, you mm-hmm. know. <clears throat> of course, ribbons as well. Also, lanterns. Okay, say that again. Okay. So, ribbons as well. Either ribbons, like I would use wider ribbons and make a bow in, out of it instead of just hanging it, like tying it in a knot and hanging it in there because it needs something, you know, it needs a statement mm-hmm. on the top of it. Um, you could have a lot of streamers coming down from a bow. Right. That would be pretty. But just putting, just tying a bunch of streamers is kind of. Right. It's underwhelming right there you go so lanterns of course yes metal or paper the little they come in you can get the little mini paper Mm -hmm. lanterns um saw some really cute ones on pinterest of course (laughs) and then you can incorporate a couple of these things so like on your palmanders you could have ribbons hanging from the bottom right or in your uh, lanterns you could have ribbons on the top of those so you Use your imagination and creativity and Pinterest. (laughs) (laughs) So petals are a big thing for aisles. Yes. You know, the most common is flanking the aisle, but you need to make sure that depending on how long your aisle is, you need to have enough petals to cover it. So, I mean, if you're having 10 rows of chairs, my and you want them densely covered, Mm -hmm. you would need about 100 stems of roses. To cover that. If you want it le- less, you know, we can go down from there. But if you wanted a densely covered f- petal aisle that's flanking the aisle, it would be about, for 10 rows, it would be about 100 flowers. Yeah. So, And it looks really pretty. It's just really full. So you can do light, which we've done, and it looks pretty. It mm-hmm. just seems like it needs a little more. Yeah. And also, we've done them in clusters where we have, like we said, you can have the vases with the candles in the bottom. Mm-hmm. Or floating candles or whatever, and then you put the flat the the petals around the, in the clusters, and then sprinkle some, and then do more clusters, right. and you know things like that. And that has a design, and it it makes it more visually interesting. You know, it's it's oh wow, that's a, mm-hmm. a statement. So also, the, you've seen them where they do the ombre effect, where they're covering the middle of the mm-hmm. aisle. Me personally, I don't like that because when they walk down the aisle, if they're wearing spiked heels, mm-hmm. they're going to get flower petals flower on petals heels. on their heels <laughs> and, and a lot of people a lot of venues won't allow you to that's true do real petals because they'll stain the floors mm-hmm. if it's an historic building and they have historic oak floors they will not let you have real petals that's true so you, you have to ask your venue but also when you walk down the aisle your dress is going to pull a lot right. of that stuff too and it's going to really mess it up but i mean if that's what you want going down the aisle do it because it will be amazing when it when you first see it right and that's a thing where you have to block off the aisle and have people coming around to the side yes. and come in you don't want them walking on that also there are 
designs. Mm -hmm. You can do curly cues and things like that around with the flowers and things. Depending on how wide your aisle is and right. stuff. But yeah. Um, so the aisle runner. So what do most people have on their wedding? They're either canvas, I think, or paper. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of paper ones. And I, I don't see the purpose in an aisle runner unless it's something that you get done on canvas or burlap or something like that that's a keepsake. Maybe mm -hmm. it has your new monogram on it yes. and it has your date. But you're going to, if it's paper, you're going to walk on it. And it's going to get dirty. Mm -hmm. Unless the carpet re you know, really yeah. clashes with your colors. That's true. Then I don't see an a interest for, for a yeah. runner, but... To each his own. Yeah, exactly. And you can do you can do things like burlap and mm -hmm. whatever kind of uh, Canvas material is really you like because it's durable. Yes, it is because you like you were saying if you're wearing heels, it's you're, not going to break the canvas. Right. It's going to go. It's going to go through. It, it could either go through the burlap as well, yeah. unless it's a, you know if it's a really close a weave, weave yeah. maybe mm -hmm. it's not. But if it's not. Mm -hmm. You're going to get burlap stuck to the back of your shoe. Or get stuck in the burlap. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, That's true. So, you know, you have to think about these things. You do. So, of course, we talked about on the aisle, you know, candles and vases on the floor, floral attached to the chairs, mm -hmm. garlands flanking the aisle. You can have wood rounds with candles. You can have lanterns on the floor. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. If you want something of interest, maybe you just do something down the aisle and you let nature take right the rest the, of it for the rest of it exactly and if you have a pretty chair you might not want to even put anything at the end of the aisle so that you know it's totally up to you right all right so we've talked about you know where you walk down the aisle but what about from the very back before you start walking down you've got that entrance there mm -hmm. we've got a few things <laughs> to uh pique your interest right there. so i mean you can have doors if you're if you're mm -hmm. opening the doors you can have wreaths on the top, right? You know, on the doors or whatever coming in, and when they open them, true, they get hidden. But you know, at least when you walk in, you see them. I guess. Also, like at the entrance of the aisle, of course, there's urns, there's candelabras, pillars, archways. You can do flower archways. Oh, I think that's. I just love that. <laughs> an archway at the beginning of the aisle, and then an, an, an arch or arbor at the ceremony site to kind of like mirror it. Mm. Oh, I just love that look. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <laughs> you could also mirror what you're doing on on the stage or the altar area mm -hmm. in the back. Right. So if you're flanking up there, then you can flank back here. Right. And then, like you were saying with the petals, I've seen the gorgeous photos of where the petals extend from the aisles all the way to the back, and they do some big curls mm -hmm. and designs back there and maybe they have something sitting right in the middle of the curl like a an urn of floral or mm -hmm. something like that you know just a really like making an entrance does that make sense yes okay <laughs> i know it's hard to visualize if, if you can't see the picture that i'm thinking of <laughs> <laughs> so you can do like boxes and crates at eat on each side which you could also do at the at the front um, boxes and crates with floral and, and of course, you got to have some candles, candles. on there. <laughs> and you, you had mentioned wood rounds. Mm -hmm. You can do big logs even. Right. I mean, depending on your look. You can have the logs standing on the end and then having your flowers and vases on the top of the logs. You can do the same with lanterns on wood. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's endless. You have to use your imagination. We're just giving you a little bit of ideas Yes, and please take these and use them as your own <laughs> and add to or take add away. Add your own touch to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, take some of these and combine them all together. <laughs> That's right. And if you do have any ideas, we would love to hear that because right. that is just... And another thing that I would, I would implore you to do is be cohesive throughout your ceremony and reception. It'll cut down on your cost if you use the same type of flowers for your ceremony as you do in the reception. Right. Don't change flower colors or flower choices. If you have everything cohesive, everything in the same color, you're using the same flowers in the altar pieces as you are in the center pieces, mm -hmm. you're going to get a much better price because they have to order more of those and they get better prices if the more they order. 
So think about oh, yeah. that. that. That is a good little tip there to save a little money. And we love doing these shows, these floral shows, because <laughs> we could talk for days about ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we have some interest. Uh, interest. I think we have some Pinterest pages on our Pinterest uh, boards um, for ideas on a lot of these things. So right. just, you know, follow us. We're at From Ring to Veil, of course. Or you can go to our floral page, Willow and Vine, right. on Pinterest, and there's tons of ideas on there. Absolutely. You know, that's They've been on there for a while as my inspiration. So Yeah, when you're designing. Right. Exactly. Um, so what have you been up to? Anything I've been interesting? horribly sick for a week. That's true. <laughs> and I ask you, because I haven't talked to you, I'm like, what have you been up to? <laughs> oh, I've just been sick. Oh, well, uh, no I've wonder. Been sick. I, have, I had a horrible cold, as you could probably tell with my voice. And it wasn't the flu, because I didn't really have a fever and I wasn't achy. It was just a cold, I guess, mm -hmm. or a sinus infection or something. But there was a couple of days we were supposed to podcast last week, mm -hmm. and I, we didn't get to because... I couldn't talk at yeah, all. She didn't have a voice, so <laughs> good thing we have some in the can. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to lately? Oh, gosh. I've just been kind of doing everything, just catching up on podcasts and um, working on our podcast mm -hmm. and working on getting some awesome guest hosts to join us. And uh, we may have some sponsors soon. Oh, yeah. Talk with a couple of those. Um and, you know, I mean, that's really all all I've been doing. <laughs> well, I've been trying to finalize clients for the floral business as mm -hmm. well. So I've been trying to do that while I was sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, I can't call you, but let me just email with you. I know. I got to email you today because I can't speak. So that was kind of a difficult thing last week because I had all these people calling me and emailing me. And I'm like, I can't talk. Yeah. You're like, hello. <laughs> Or I sounded like Elmer Fudd for a couple of days where, where my sure nose was did. so clogged. My nose was so clogged. Everything was just coming out. Like, uh, duh, duh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, so anyway. It's that time. Yeah. We have some really cool shows coming up. We're going to start a series on destination weddings. And we have a couple of planners that we're going to talk to about those type of, of things. So... Stay tuned for that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss those. And who else do we have? We have a great makeup roundtable, makeup and hair show coming up. And we're going to have several makeup and hair artists in the lo in our local Seattle area. Some awesome ones, mm -hmm. our favorites. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. They do awesome work. So we're going to have that coming up. And we're also going to have another installment of our words glossary. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking flowers today... You'll hear another show a couple, maybe a week later, about flower terms. Right. We hope you guys are enjoying those because I'm learning a lot from them. Right. You know, I we do know a lot already, but there's always stuff that you just don't know. So I'm, I'm excited about that one. Mm. So anyway, remember that you can always reach us anytime by emailing us at info at fromringtoveil.com. And also hashtag fromringtoveil on Instagram, Twitter. Anything like that. So until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com.